everybody, my name is Tiffany and I am a zookeeper at Zoo Knoxville in Tennessee. I work with chimpanzees and gorillas and I initially filmed this video with chimpanzees in the background, we're outside, but it was super windy so you couldn't hear anything so we're gonna have to settle for this fun gorilla picture in the background. So I graduated from Cooperstown back in 2010, I grew up in Milford. And after that, I went on Rotary Foreign Exchange to Germany for a year and then got my Bachelor's of Science at Unity College in Maine. It's a super tiny school. And right now I am earning my master's through Miami University in Ohio's Project Dragonfly program. So we go to conservation hotspots around the world. I'm focusing in primate conservation education. So talking to people about apes, I love them, <laughs> and other primates. Um, so I'm going to give the blanket statement. Everything I say is just my own opinions. I'm not speaking on behalf of my zoo or any other zoo out there. You're just hearing what I think. And when I talk about zoos, I'm talking about zoos that are accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, or AZA. So that's our big governing board. And there's thousands of zoos in the U.S., but there's only a couple hundred that are accredited by AZA. So you know if you have an AZA zoo, there are the highest animal care standards. We take extra care to have proper nutrition, opportunities to have like natural behaviors, um, all the good things. So we're not talking about the Tiger King style zoos out there to make money. AZA zoos, we're not in it for the money, I promise. We barely make minimum wage. <laughs> so we're all in it because we love it. And all the money the zoos make uh, really goes to conservation. So that is my blanket statement. So I know there's at least one of you watching this that's like, I hate zoos, zoos are terrible, I wish zoos didn't exist. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I wish zoos didn't have to exist too, um, but for different reasons. <laughs> so um, I wish we lived in a world where wildlife could be wild and where humans were just another species coexisting with the life around us. But sadly, that isn't our reality. We live in a world where zoos are often the only place that animals uh, can live safely. They don't have a habitat in the wild. Take gorillas, for example. If we were to start just like releasing all our gorillas into the wild, it would not go well. We would just see the loss of that incredible species. Um, and why? Not only are our zoo, zoo gorillas super spoiled, <laughs> um, they are not used to having to um, deal with predators. They're used to an abundance of food all day. It's healthy. Nothing's toxic. Any toy that they pick up, it's safe. It's not venomous. It's going to bite them. They're used to having shelter when it rains or if it's hot out, they just go in the air conditioning. So our guys really are not fit to just be released into the wild. Um, but something more startling that a lot of people don't realize is there's actually not space for these animals to go back in the wild in a lot of cases. So in the Congo rainforest where gorillas are native to, there is a huge issue with habitat destruction and habitat loss and it's partly because of development because there's so many people in that area um, partly because of logging palm oil plantations palm oil is in everything you eat if you want to avoid it or look for sustainable options i'll post a link in the bottom of this video um, for you to follow um, coltan mining is a huge problem there so they go in and they mine these resources in gorilla habitat and it makes it so it's not safe for the animals, not only because they don't have a home, but there's all these people in that area now. And gorillas and chimpanzees and bonobos, they all can catch any sickness that people have. So if I go in to the forest with a common cold, or if I go to work with a common cold, and I'm not being extra cautious, it can make my animals really sick. And we don't want that. So with more access to uh, the wildlife in Congo rainforest, uh, they can get sick. They are hunted for bush meat, taken as pets. Chimpanzees are pretty common pets. If you ever see a video of a chimp in like a diaper or something, don't share it. That's not good, that's not ethical. We don't want that. Um, so, backtracking a little bit. Um, I mentioned coltan. And something that a lot of people don't know is that all of us, unfortunately, are responsible in some way for this habitat destruction. And coltan's a mineral that is in smartphones, tablets, all sorts of electronic devices. And I'm gonna throw in a little conservation plug here. You can actually recycle your old devices. Um, it can be totally broken. You can have an iPhone that's totally smashed, anything like that. You can send it to places like Zoo Knoxville and we'll recycle that for you. And by recycling it, we're cutting down the demand for that resource and therefore saving gorilla habitats and chimps and bonobos and everything else that lives in those rainforests. So it's just an easy thing that you can do. And you can also keep your phone for longer. I know that's hard to do sometimes. Um, but just think the less 
you're pulling on that demand, the less that they're going to be supplying uh, coltan. So um, zoos also play a huge role in habitat conservation and uh, wildlife conservation in general because we have to. So I mentioned the AZA before and one of the requirements to be an AZA accredited zoo is actually donating a large portion of the money that we bring in to conservation. One of my favorite conservation organizations is largely funded by zoos it's called the Pan-African Sanctuary Alliance or PASA. I do a lot of volunteering for them. I'm a little bit obsessed. They do such great work in Africa, working with uh, primate sanctuaries around there to make sure that the animals are well taken care of, uh, the staff's well trained, the staff does a great job at all these sanctuaries on education programs. They're just incredible. So if you're looking for a organization that you could support, PASA, they're wonderful. Um, so there's also species like the Arabian oryx, California uh, condor, the golden lion tamarind, uh, th there's tons of them, um, that wouldn't even exist in the wild if it weren't for zoos. So zoos do breeding programs and are able to release these individuals into safe areas and those areas are closely monitored, the community gets involved, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, but zoos wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have people coming in, in through our gates, spending their money there. So if you are looking for a way to support a zoo or conservation, go to your zoo, go out and support them. Um, because you know that if you're going to an AZA zoo, some of that money is going to conservation and the rest is just going to like keep the zoo open. Um, but to me, the most important thing that zoos do, the most important role is to teach people about wildlife. So we wanna make that wow moment that you're going to remember. So you go to a zoo and you see a gorilla playing around. We have one gorilla, she likes to hang upside down all the time. People love her. So you go in and you see this gorilla and she makes eye contact with you and she's playing with you. You're going to remember that. And then when you remember that, you're gonna be like, oh, I'm hearing about gorilla cell phone recycling, I don't care. Or you're gonna say, hey, I remember this gorilla that I saw and she was playing and I wanna protect gorillas, gorillas are incredible. So that's what I want you to do. Every person that comes to the zoo, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming into zoos every single year. And if everybody or even just one person each day could learn something and connect with those animals and then go and take the initiative to take action or make a fundraiser, do something to protect these animals, then we're doing our job. And to me, that's the most important thing. There's a quote that I'm gonna leave you with um, by Baba Diam, who um, said, in the end, we'll conserve only what we love. We'll love only what we understand, and we will understand only what we are taught. To me, that quote, I mean, it, it sums up everything that I'm doing. I wanna make everybody love and understand and care about these animals. Great apes are my thing. Um, my husband sings elephants. I mean, whatever you're into, you've gotta teach someone about it and you have to help them understand and share your passion. So I hope by watching this video, you guys are seeing, obviously I love my animals, um, but I hope I hope you're starting to love them too. Come check out gorillas, follow different Instagram accounts. I mean, Zoo Knoxville's got great uh, content on there or pasta, everything. So I wanna leave you now, I know I already said I was leaving you something, I wanna leave you with a challenge. So I want you to think about what you're passionate about. And is there a quote that really inspires you that kind of encapsulates everything that you wanna do? And how can you share that information with people around you? So can you tell a story or use that quote to kind of start a conversation, have a discussion about what you're passionate about? Um, so thank you all for listening. I hope you love gorillas and chimpanzees because I do and they're wonderful. And I hope you have a great school year. Bye.